My dad was very, you know, into music. He wanted all of us as children to be able to play at least the piano. So I actually grew up with a piano in the house. And, you know, my dad got us a Ghanaian piano teacher. And um, all, you know, all of us could play, say, myself and my immediate elder sister. Now, my immediate elder sister became the star when we were very young because she was really gifted at it. She could play a lot of classical pieces, even represented her school. And then she came home and said, Daddy, you know, my music just says I should have another instrument aside the piano. So my dad now bought her a guitar. So it was a case of, I have a guitar, but I don't touch my guitar. So there was a guitar in the house. She couldn't play it. Nobody could play it. And for years, but I don't touch my guitar was always the, the issue until I got into the University of Lagos. <laughs> Unilag was in a strike in 96. The strike lasted about six months, the usual ASU stuff. And um, about four months into the strike, my next door neighbor was like, well, there's a guitar in your house now, you know, why don't you let me help you restrain it, repair it. And you know, we, I, you know, you can start learning to play. And I thought, well, since I have nothing to do, why not? You know, why not? Let me just learn the thing. So I, you know, he helped me to fix up, fix up the guitar, tune the strings and then he gave me one big brown envelope big brown envelope that had you know the photocopy of a guitar book and so i put pulled out the first page put it on my lap and i started and that was how i fell in love with the guitar way back in 96 i just fell in love from the first day i played my first chord a major d major that was it i was hooked during that period and I started seeking after God and immediately I dedicated my life I knew something was up because I immediately wrote a song like in one in, in less than a week I would just open my Bible open Psalm 1 and I started you know and I wrote the song with Psalm 1 and that's how my journey into you know songwriting in an intense way started I joined a fellowship called the Rock Foundation Mission and they had a music team called Rock Solid and in that music team were, you know, people like Lara Bajomo, now Lara George, Tony Shokefo, now T.Y. Bello, uh, for later on M.M. Emma joined, and uh, many other, Moyo, Sorry Ojo, and many other guys, they joined, and of course, Dapo Tori Miro, he was, the, he was the choir director, you know. We got involved in a music project called Your Dream Come True, and we actually had, did a CD, and that was how my first experience of going into studio happened. And you know, we went to the studio, we, the, 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 the work was really, really good. It was unprecedented at that time that university students would actually record a CD. This was way back in 1998-99. It was, it was amazing. Then, how many people had CD players in Nigeria? Very, very few, you know? So that experience really, it molded me and we started having invitations to minister. And you know, with all those IVs, we're going here to this church, that church, we're going on TV to play. And then my parents found out, that's how they found out that. Bola was really serious with this music, you know. <laughs> She's a bloody sweetheart. Hey! So that's very first one. One, two, three, four, six. The times when I'm down, when I'm frustrated, you know, I tend to write some really deep songs when I'm really frustrated and I'm very sad, you know about things that are not going the way I would want them to. And uh, yeah, my relationship with God, sometimes when I'm just playing my quiet time, worshiping, a song just bubbles out. It literally just comes out. You know, in the days when I used to ride in a downfall, I'm riding and the conductor is making noise. And right there, as the conductor is making all sorts of noise and things are happening, a song pops into my head. And I, and I just pick out a pen and a paper and I start to write right there in the bus. Even as the bus is, you know, rickety and it's shaking. I've had many, many instances where songs just literally drop into my heart. There was an experience I had um, in a renowned uh, producer studio, Wally Only Precisely, and um, one of you know, the, uh, his assistants was talking with me and he found out that I taught Asha. And I was like, eh, bros, you taught Asha to play the guitar. And you're singing gospel. Oh. But that just, that just sums it up. Anyone who goes into music and makes up his mind to sing gospel or to sing for Jesus and take a stand for Jesus should be ready for a very long road that will, be, will not be filled with roses. <laughs>
you go to radio stations besides coming up with quality content you have to pay the radio stations to play your music gosh what the matter is if you are singing gospel if god has not called you don't try it don't try this at home <laughs> the world right now is like the marriage in cana that jesus attended that yeah there is plenty of wine as a christian artist there will be a time when someone will turn to us and say they have no more wine and to be up to us at the representations of Jesus to come up with something better, sweeter, at, you know, before the end of the marriage. But true of the matter is, if you have substance and keep following God, God will make a way for you. But if you are good doing this for money, forget it. Forget it. Shema Dupa is a combination of my life experiences, I would say, over the last seven, eight years. I've had a number of miracles happen to me. So I've had miracles happen to me. I've, had, I've seen God turn things around. I've seen God provide for me over the years. I've seen my business as a guitar teacher and as a voice teacher blossom over the years. So it's a combination of all that that is this album. The times I've prayed and I say, God, my times are in your hand. Though. Bless me now. You know, that, like about Ongba Dura, my God, Moko Jumi see or Ele Da me, Mobe Jumi Soke, Olu Agbote me, as in, I'm like, God, hear me, hear me, God. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence come in my help. Show through me that you are worth following, that anyone who makes up his mind to follow Jesus will be better off at the end of the day. And that has been my prayer, you know. And really, that's what Shane Madupe is all about. Oh, She Baba.